Dr. Anthony Harper, blessed to be with Dr. Schleifler. That, is that the way you pronounce your last name? That's right. Uh, Ron Schleifler. Uh, uh, and your doctor degree is in? In uh, communications. Communications. Yeah. And, you, and you're going to be talking today about psychological warfare. And I know that you've got a great book there. Uh, you can hold it up on the screen. Yes, sure. Yeah, this is my book. Came out uh, a few years back. Uh, and it's called, what is it called? It's called The uh, Perspective of Psychological Operations in Contemporary Conflicts. And um, I have a few chapters in it. Um, some chapters talking about the technology uh, and the counter technology, cyber war, cyber attacks, uh, etc. And the one chapter deals with uh, why are Israelis so reluctant uh, to use uh, propaganda, especially in light of being uh, constantly attacked by uh, Arab propaganda and anti Semitic propaganda for uh, so many decades. Um, and uh, another chapter that I have, which is the last chapter, is showing how to combat um, radical Islam um, uh, using the methods of psychological warfare. Okay, a very special book, uh, very familiar with those issues, uh, having a doctorate degree in psychology myself, and uh, it is really uh, alarming uh, the, the intensity with psychological warfare that we see uh, played out with propaganda. Uh, what is your concern about the use of propaganda now uh, regarding uh, Israel, uh, portraying Israel as the occupier and uh, an apartheid state? Um, well, propaganda is a tool which has uh, always been used uh, since, uh, since uh, biblical times. Uh, in during war and in between wars and after wars, um, it's very effective, especially it's effective on those who think that they are not uh, influenced by propaganda. They are the ones who are being most influenced by propaganda. And uh, today, uh, Israel is um, taking the brunt of a propaganda attacks uh, from the Palestinians, and uh, Israel has been doing this for the past uh, six decades, uh, if not more, uh, Iranian propaganda and, um, and radical Islamic propaganda in general, and um, which uh, the BDS movement and the apartheid state campaign are uh, just the uh, last um, uh, two outstanding points in, uh, in, a, in a very long battle. Um, the, at the beginning, the Russians who uh, were behind this whole initiative of setting, of creating the PLO uh, in Egypt, um, they were convinced that uh, with the with the arms that they would supply uh, Egypt and Syria, uh, they would be able to overcome Israel. The Palestinians uh, were uh, convinced that once Israel uh, will go into battle with uh, the great um, arms uh, armies of uh, Egypt and Syria, Israel is going to uh, is going to lose, of course, and then the Palestinians will be asking uh, those two formidable uh, Arab countries uh, to uh, grant them an estate. Um, and at the same time, they realize that this is not going to happen. So, in their charter which they uh, drafted, uh, this is a very um, obscure 
um, status of what the what is the stand the stand of the Palestinians vis-à-vis uh, -vis the Arab nations. Uh, but they were said, let's worry about it later. First, let the uh, Arab countries uh, fight against uh, Israel. And uh, they were uh, using uh, terror attacks uh, inside Israel uh, in order to uh, inflame, so to speak, the situation between uh, Israel and its uh, Arab neighbors. Now, that uh, strategy failed in the famous Six-Day War in uh, June 1967. And in six days, Israel defeated uh, three major armies, the Egyptian, the Syrian, and the Jordanian. And uh, as a result, uh, got the Sinai Peninsula and the uh, and Judean Samaria and the Golan Heights. Uh, all of a sudden, Israel um, bloomed into uh, a big chunk of territory. And the Palestinians saw that the, um, I'm, I'm stressing the Palestinians and the Soviets who were behind them in the first place as a tool, using them as a tool uh, against America it, well, in the height of the Cold War, they realized that this strategy has failed. So they uh, switched to a different strategy. And the strategy which uh, is um, formulated by, uh, by the communists in Russia, and then by the communists in China, and then by the communists in Vietnam, in Northern Vietnam. And together they came up with a strategy of revolutionary warfare which is heavily based on psychological warfare. Now, what is psychological warfare? Is the effort to persuade your enemy, little by little, to give up. Now, uh, the way they did it is by switching, uh, first of all, to international terrorism to focus world attention on them. And this is why the, uh, the Munich uh, massacre in uh, the Olympic Village in 1972 um, was planned in the first place. And then once the world was focusing on the Palestinians, then the Palestinians started with a new strategy, which is the peace strategy or so-called uh, so peace. And Arafat was invited to speak uh, in the UN. It was a bit of a scandal because he wouldn't give up his gun, uh, et cetera. And this is where he delivered his famous uh, olive branch uh, speech. And it was two years after the Munich massacre. And this uh, so-called peace campaign is uh, continuing to this day. Um, this uh, so the Palestinians are basically using the double talk strategy in English. They say that's uh, they're interested in peace and human rights and everything. In Arabic, they say totally different things about. I'll bring up another issue here regarding the whole Palestinian word and the Palestine issue. I'm, I'm curious about how propaganda is related to uh, misrepresenting history. Uh, from my understanding, the Roman Emperor Hadrian is the one that created the word Palestine. It wasn't called that before. It was called Judea and Samaria here in Israel. So what is your concern about using uh, them, them using propaganda to promote this lie of, of a Palestinian uh, people and, and, and the need for a Palestinian state? The... Um... One of the basic um, components of psychological warfare, or rather even on persuasion in general, is to use the, uh, is, uh, to use the language as a major uh, persuasion tool. You change the word, you change the meaning of the word. The Soviets were the masters of this uh, strategy in the past century. Um, um, they changed the meaning of democracy. The Soviet uh, constitution was the most democratic of all, uh, of all constitutions 
in the West. This is on paper, of course, while they continue to deploy the gulags um, and the concentration camps uh, in Siberia. So um, they changed the name. So first of all, they invented the concept of the Palestinian because uh, up to the six, the six day war to 1967, uh, they were called Arabs, which they are. And then they switched it to Palestinian Arabs and they, they dropped the Arabs and created a unique brand, uh, which is uh, called Palestinians. Nowadays, you ask a, um, a campus uh, student, what is, uh, who are the Palestinians? They have no idea that they are they are Arabs. This is uh, it's it's a brilliant strategy of branding um, and separating it from the image of the Arab, which uh, might not be so positive uh, in Western eyes. So once they created the brand of uh, a Palestinian, then the Palestinian uh, um, they started the uh, battle on history. Uh, first of all, they moved the history to the um, uh, to uh, Saudi Arabia. The Bible did not happen here; it happened in Saudi Arabia. And secondly, uh, the Palestinians are the descendants of the Canaanites. So, if they are the descendants of the Canaanites, they predated the Jews uh, and Abraham, our forefather who uh, came uh, from Mesopotamia on, under God's uh, command and uh, came to the land of, of Canaan. And, uh, and the Palestinians were the Canaanites in essence. So this is the first lie. This, the second lie is that Palestinians had a, always had an independent state uh, which the Jews have taken uh, away from them uh, by uh, unethical and illegitimate uh, methods. So, uh, so here comes the state. There never has been, of course, a Palestinian state. There never has been a Palestinian people. So it's an invention on the top of invention. And uh, especially today in, in, in an uh, era where uh, we don't uh, take the, where the, there's no learning, there's no, uh, there's no knowledge, there's only data. Uh, of course, they can able to insert data into, uh, into, the, um, into Google, into um, the history websites, into propaganda websites. And then people say, well, it's only fair that they should also get a, uh, a state of their own. Um, well, it's uh, somebody uh, marked, an Israeli politician marked, uh, uh, remarked a few, uh, few years ago, uh, what kind of a state is it which they cannot pronounce its own name because the, this, the letter P uh, does not exist in uh, in the Arabic language, so there's no Palestine. Okay, uh, I need to. Uh, uh, well, I want to. I should say, encourage people to learn more about this issue by looking on the internet. Uh, we we have to uh, conclude today, but want to encourage people to uh, look further uh, into your book about the psychological warfare and to study the issue about the Roman history. Uh, Roman uh, Emperor Hadrian and how he invented the myth of Palestine. You can easily find that on, on history websites. So once again, your book is titled? It's titled uh, Perspective of Psychological Operations in Contemporary Conflicts. And um, it's uh, dealing with uh, the Palestinian psychological warfare methods. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and with ways of dealing with propaganda in general, using the methods of psychological warfare. Well, I, I wish that we could uh, we have more time. Uh, maybe a, 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 another discussion on this uh, issue it really is a, a very sensitive, a very crucial issue to talk about. 
the psychological warfare, especially in light of the myth of Palestine and how politicians uh, at the White House and so many other places are portraying Israel, uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, not as only as occupiers, but an apartheid state, which is totally <laughs> untrue. I've eyewitnessed uh, that it, it is not an apartheid state uh, whatsoever. Thank you, Dr. Schleifer, for uh, joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.